And so in order to pay this debt to one's ancestors, um, one is obedient to the customs um, and maybe making sacrifices to their ancestors, this kind of thing. And gradually they um, imagine their ancestors becoming more and more powerful um, in proportion to even the strength of the community. So as the community becomes very strong, more and more powerful, they imagine their ancestors who are responsible for creating this becoming more and more powerful until eventually they think of them as gods, not simply as individuals who created their society. In section 20 then, um, we finally get to Christianity and how Christianity interprets this. The rise of, very top of 62, the rise of um, the Christian God as the maximum God that has been attained so thus far, therefore, also brought a maximum of feelings of guilt into appearance on earth. Assuming that we have by now entered into the reverse movement, one might, with no little probability, deduce from the unstoppable decline of faith in the Christian God that there would already be a considerable decline in human consciousness of guilt. Okay, so um, you remember the um, um, passage from Daybreak where the madman runs into the village square and says, God is dead, what should we do? And, and the villagers, the sophisticated atheists, look at him like he's crazy, um, and he says, I've come too soon. Right? So that although they no longer accept the villagers, the sophisticated city folk, already reject the metaphysics of Christianity, they don't yet see that the collapse of that metaphysical view is going to lead to the collapse of moral values. Um, and this is something that Nietzsche is worried about. Uh, he's worried that the collapse of that metaphysics is going to leave us without any affirmation, without any um, um, values to affirm going to leave us with nihilism. And here we can see that the worry is that what we've created in terms of our own self-discipline, sovereign individual, uh, is liable to be lost also. Um, okay, sorry, so section 21 then. Um, to the moralization of guilt. So, so much for the present, uh, in short and roughly speaking, on the connection of the concepts of guilt, duty, to religious presupposition. I have, until now, intentionally left aside, left aside the actual moralization of these concepts. They're being pushed back into conscience, more precisely, the entanglement of bad conscience, guilt, with the concept of God. Um, in line 20. With the moralization of the concepts guilt and duty, with their being pushed back into a bad conscience, we have in actual fact the attempt to reverse the direction of the development just described, at least to bring its movement to a standstill. Um, precisely, he says, the prospect of a conclusive redemption, redemption, that is, a conclusive paying off of one's debt. The prospect of a conclusive redemption shall now pessimistically close itself off once and for all. Um, the gaze shall now bleakly deflect off, deflect back from the brazen impossibility. Those concepts of guilt and duty shall now turn themselves backwards and against him. There is no doubt. First against the debtor in whom bad conscience now fixes itself firmly, eats uh, into him, spreads out, and grows like a polyp in every breadth and depth until finally with the impossibility of discharging the debt, the impossibility of discharging penance is also conceived of, and the idea that it cannot be paid off 
eternal punishment. Uh, punishment is eternal, infinite, because no amount of penance, no repayment will ever make up for the debt that we owe. Finally, however, even against the creditor, think here of the causa prima of man, of the beginning of the human race, of its progenitor, who is now burdened with a curse. Adam, original sin, unfreedom of the will, or nature, from whose womb man arises and into which the evil principle is now placed, the demonization of nature, he says. Or of existence generally, which is left as valueless in itself, nihilistic, turning away from it, longing into nothingness, or longing into its opposite, and uh, being other, Buddhism and related things. Until all at once we stand before the paradoxical and horrifying remedy in which tortured humanity found temporary relief. Christianity's stroke of genius. God sacrificed himself for the guilt of man. God himself extracting payment of himself. God as the only one who can redeem from man what has become irredeemable for man himself. The creditor sacrificing himself for his debtor out of love. He asks, is that credible? Out of love for his debtor. Okay, so under Christianity then, we owe a debt to Jesus that we literally can never repay. Um, that the idea here is that Jesus uh, paid for our sins, in particular, our original sin, something that we are all guilty of, simply for being human. Um, this, this is something that we literally can never repay, um, and therefore we remain guilty because of our sin, um, and unworthy of this sacrifice, um, as long as we remain human, as long as we remain embodied. Um, okay, so one of the things that I said we should be thinking about here is how broadly or narrowly uh, Nietzsche is thinking about morality. In the very most narrow sense, just uh, simply narrow Christian morality, or maybe more broadly encompassing more. Um, so here, it's pretty clear that he's thinking of morality as being connected to the Christian notion of sin. Um, and the Christian notion of sin, as he's understanding it, um, has us rejecting and um, um, turning away from our humanity, our physical embodiment. Um, and so that's, that's what he was talking about um, with uh, the demonization of nature, original sin, unfreedom of the will, and turning toward something otherworldly, like in heaven, for example. Um, so it's a joke among philosophy professors who teach introductory ethics classes that when they're talking about morality, often they're talking about questions like whether morality can be justified in terms of one's self-interest or sacrificing one in order to save two or five others. These are the kind of things that philosophy professors worry about. But the joke is that when, when we're up here talking about morality with those kinds of problems, our students are thinking about sex. So, when you ask an intro ethics class about a moral problem or a moral dilemma, um, sex is uh, inevitably raised. Or think about this. If you think about um, politicians, for example, and in the context of politics when morals are raised, it's almost never about whether a change in the tax code would be moral or not, would be more just or not. It's almost always about the sexual behavior of a politician. So that's what uh, people first think about when they are talking about the morality of um, a politician. 
So now think about the Christian attitude toward sex. Um, so not only is it sinful and wrong, uh, even having thoughts and desires about it are uh, thought to be sin. So you're guilty simply for having these kinds of instincts and desires. Um, and then more generally, anything having to do with our physical embodiment is itself a source of guilt. And now, Nietzsche thinks, we can see what um, has gone on. Um, he says um, in section 22, um, that creature, he says, locked up in the state for the purpose of pain, who invented the bad conscience in order to cause himself pain after the more natural outlet for his desire to cause pain was blocked. This man of bad conscience has taken over religious presuppositions in order to drive his self-torturer to its most gruesome severity and sharpness, guilt before God. This thought becomes an instrument of torture for him. In God, he captures the most extreme opposites he can find to his actual and inescapable animal instincts. He reinterprets these animal instincts themselves as guilt before God. Um, Okay, um, last point here. Okay, last point. Um, for Nietzsche, uh, he thinks disclosing this, on the one hand, will have us result in our raising questions about it and challenging it. Um, but he also thinks that He also thinks that the metaphysics that underlies this picture is no longer credible. Um, so he asks himself, in section 24, I need to finish, so I need to finish up uh, this last section here. Um, he asks himself, so let's say, I close with three question marks, as one can of course say. Is an ideal actually being erected here, or is one being demolished? So he's worried about collapsing this moral system of valuation on itself. Um, um, but he's worried about what might replace it. He's worried about. I'm sorry. Hi. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so let me uh, say just one more word. Uh, on Friday about this, and then we'll move on to uh, the last session.